The Gemini full moon happening November 27th, 1.16 a.m. Pacific time, 4.16 a.m. Eastern time, and 9.16 a.m. Universal time is the first full moon since an intense, heavy, change-making, course-correcting eclipse season. Also the first full moon since a very deep purging for a lot of us emotionally Scorpio season. So this full moon, I sense, feel, and the astrology is saying this as well, this full moon in Gemini has us looking to the future. It has us looking toward 2024, a new foundation. What do we want to build next? What is most important to us now? What are we ready to say yes to? And speaking of 2024, I now have my year ahead readings if you want to get an overview of the entire year, the transits that will be most challenging to you, the ones that will be most supportive of you, and most important, how you can best work with the energies to have the most beautiful, productive, feel-good year, you can now book those on my website. I also now have gift cards available. So if you would like to give the gift of empowerment, the gift of astrology to one of your nearest and dearest, you can also purchase those. This full moon has the potential to be sparklingly social, inspiring. It's a fiery full moon. It's igniting our desire in one area of your life, which I'm going to share with you in the 12 sign readings. In one area of your life, you may feel lit up. You may feel rare to go. But because Saturn's involved, Saturn is saying, is this really the right thing for you? Do you really want this? How much do you really want this? And are you willing to do the work? So in this video, I'm going to share with you where in your chart you are experiencing the full moon in Gemini. Who will most feel this full moon? What are the aspects and how can we best work with those energies? And as always, I will be pulling an oracle card for each of the 12 signs as well. So I highly encourage you to watch the introduction of the video if you want to get a sense of how you can best work with the energies, how you can finesse them, because as always, there are many layers. And know, my friend, that even though this full moon has an energetic expression, two weeks before and two weeks after, these messages are timeless. So whenever you come across this video, it has something for you. It has a nugget of empowerment to boost you and move you forward on your path. So I can't wait to unpack this full moon for you. But first, I want to say hello and welcome. If you are brand new to me, if you're just finding my channel now, this is a like-minded community. You are warmly welcome to join us in the chat, the YouTube chat, 9 a.m. Pacific time, every Sunday morning when I premiere my videos. Be sure and subscribe and tap the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And hello and welcome back to those of you who've been watching my videos. I so appreciate you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for subscribing. Your support means more to me than you know. I'm Betsy Gutting. I'm a psychic astrologer and intuitive life coach and the author of the book, the magic of saying yes, answering your heart's true calling. It's always my goal to empower you. In my videos, as well as my professional astrology consultations, I weave together divine downloads, spiritual insights, and Western tropical astrology. I do do astrology consultations. I offer a variety of readings, which I'm going to tell you more about at the end of this video, so be sure and stay tuned for that. And I have a free gift for you, which I'll tell you about at the end of the video, for those of you who'd like to receive my weekly inspirational astrology updates, the astrology of the week, you don't want to miss what's going on between videos, just go to my website, subscribe for free, and you will get that free instant download immediately. So who will most feel this full moon in Gemini? The full moon is happening at four degrees of Gemini. So those of you who have planets or points between zero and nine degrees of Gemini or the other mutable signs of Sagittarius, Virgo, or Pisces, you will feel this full moon most personally, most intensely. That said, we all have Gemini somewhere in our natal astrology chart. So we will all be feeling this energy, especially because the aspects that are being made to this full moon are quite intense, which I'm about to get into. Now, all full moons are culminations. Something comes to fruition, something manifests, or there's an ending, there's a full circle graduation moment. 
often during a full moon as well, we receive, uh, the light bulb goes off. We receive an epiphany. Something comes to the light. We get clarity. And this is definitely a clarity bringing full moon. Full moons tend to feel more emotional. Why? Because they are oppositions. During a full moon, we have the sun opposed the moon. And because it's an opposition, we feel things outside of ourselves, external events. Relationship dynamics often trigger us emotionally during a full moon. Now, this full moon is a culmination of the Gemini new moon. So you might want to look back to mid-June of 2023 and ask yourself, what was going on for me then? Did anything happen? What were the intentions that I was seeding? That's the most important thing. What were you thinking about? What did your heart really want during that time? That's what could come to culmination or fruition, or you could receive some sort of insight about that desire during this full moon. So we have the moon in Gemini, which is a mutable air sign, sitting across the zodiac wheel, opposing the sun in Sagittarius, which is mutable fire. Both Gemini and Sagittarius, being mutable signs, help us move through change. They help us move through a transition. So this is one of those full moons where we may feel like we are en route to somewhere. We may not know where we're going, but we are definitely in a period of change, of shift, of deciding. Gemini rules often decisions, and oftentimes in Gemini energy, we have trouble making a decision. We can feel quite indecisive. This full moon wants to help you to get clarity, my friend, on whatever you are contemplating during this time. Gemini is the archetype of the divine messenger. So this is the area of receiving divine downloads, communication with others. This is the back and forth. It's a very social energy. Gemini loves connection. Wherever you have Gemini in your chart, my friend, is where you want to have that sense of simpatico with others. Gemini is the archetype of the lovers, also the twins, also siblings. So with Gemini energy, we want to feel like a soul sister, soul brotherhood with other people. They don't have to be in our immediate family. Oftentimes they're not. We want to feel a sense of camaraderie. We're in this together. We have each other's backs. We're doing this together and it's playful. It's light. It's spontaneous. It's stimulating. Because Mercury rules Gemini, it also rules our retail transactions. Wherever we have contact with a merchant, and of course this happens to be synchronistically by design, it's happening around the time of Black Friday where people can kind of go a little crazy to get the best deal or where we could all just feel some sort of pressure to figure out what we're giving others for gifts and, or to get our shopping done, so to speak. Now, Gemini energy is always towing the line. It's a dual sign, duality. So it's always towing the line between the mundane world, the here's all the things I have to do, here's all the details, I have to figure all of this stuff out. It's very mundane, everyday stuff. And it walks the line between this very earthly mercurial world and the magical world, the alchemical world, the magician energy, the turning dross into gold, where we want to feel magic and synchronicities and moments of, oh my gosh, yes, I am a spiritual being. Yes, I am co-creating my reality. I am the magician. I can do this. So this is where I think we get the magic of the season, the holiday season. Of course, this has to do with Sagittarius energy as well, which I'm going to touch on in a moment. But I'm telling you this, my friend, because it's very important, <laughs> at least as a Gemini sun, that we don't get so involved in all of the nitty gritty details, all the stuff we have to do, that we lose the magic, that we lose our connection to the divine. Now on a deeper level, and this is important to the foundation building that we're doing for 2024, on a deeper level, Gemini energy is the first memory that we all had, regardless of whether you have planets or points in Gemini or not. The first memory that you had when you were in school, this could have been early childhood or during grade school, Gemini rules early learning. The first memory that you had, often involving a teacher or the other kids in school, where you wanted to feel seen, you needed to feel seen, you needed to feel acknowledged, you needed to feel loved. A Gemini full moon could take you back to a moment like that. This is where we received an imprint as children about what our gifts were, our talents were, about our ability to bring our enthusiasm and our special, that special thing that you have to give to the world 
the ability, the confidence, the competence to bring that out into the world and share it with others. And this brought to mind a memory for me of when I was a little girl and my second grade teacher, Mrs. Wing, my second grade teacher, Mrs. Wing, her name is sounds just like she was. She had this ethereal quality to her, this lyrical quality that reminded me of a hummingbird. She was light and delicate and very loving. And one day she announced to all of our class that she was getting married and that we would all be invited to her wedding. We would all be invited. So I remember being at her wedding with my mom. At the reception, the lunch was all concluded and she was walking around talking to people and my mom said, She's free now. Do you want to go say hi to her? And this was Southern California where I grew up. My mom was a Leo sun, Sag moon, and she elevated celebrities, I would say, a little bit to like royalty status, which a lot of us do in this culture. So she looked at me, my mom, with that sort of sparkle in her eye and said, let's go talk to the bride. And so she brought me took me by the hand and I was very shy. I was a very shy girl. And I walked up to her and I said, I love your dress. It's so beautiful. And she took my hand and she leaned down and she kissed me on the cheek. She kissed me on the cheek. And I must have held my cheek like this for days after her wedding because I felt like the queen, the queen had kissed me. My teacher, the bride, the queen saw me. She saw me. And I think this is something we're all going to be feeling and wanting if only on an unconscious level during this Gemini full moon. Now the sun in Sagittarius across from the moon in Gemini is fire. It is aliveness. It is optimism. It's I can do this. There's this burning desire in my heart. I feel inspired. I feel adventurous. I'm ready for anything and I'm willing to take a risk to build something. This is a building full moon to build something that is solid and sustainable for this next phase of my life. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is grand ideas, which is big new possibilities. Not only this, but Mars is conjuncting the sun in Sagittarius. Mars is our motivation and our drive, and the sun and Mars are supercharging each other with this go for it, go get it, go after it energy. The sun and Mars in Sagittarius want us to believe in ourselves. They're going to give us a boost forward, a push forward. Because the sun rules identity, I feel this as like a firing up of our sense of self. This said, all of this fiery, go for it, take a risk, you can do it, I believe in myself, Sagittarius energy is opposing the moon in Gemini. And the higher octave is, yes, I'm game, let's do this. Both Sag and Gemini want freedom. They want adventure. They want to try new things. They're open. It's very open energy. However, the lower octave of Gemini energy can be anxiety. It can be worry. It can be indecisiveness, sometimes self-doubt. And the lower octave of Sagittarius energy can be excess, overdoing, and even sometimes overconfidence. So I feel that there's a part of us that's going to want to go wild, like let our inner wild child out for sure. We're like, I'm. it's been so heavy, all the Scorpio energy. The eclipse, it's been all so heavy. I think a lot of us are going to be like, F it, F it. I am doing something fun. I'm taking this adventure. I'm booking this trip. I'm I'm doing what I want to do. I've had it. Some of us, or maybe, maybe most of us, are going to be feeling that, like, throw caution to the wind. I am tired of the heaviness. But guess what? It's not just the moon in lively, spontaneous, sure, I'm open for anything, Gemini and the sun and Mars in fiery, risk-taking Sagittarius. We also have Saturn coming to the party. You could say Saturn is crashing the party. However, there is another side to the Saturn that I'm going to share with you, which is very important. But Saturn and Pisces squaring, making a square, which is tension and pressure. Saturn in Pisces making a square to this full moon in Gemini could feel like a classic wet blanket energy. It could definitely feel like, yeah, I want to go do all these fun things, but here's my list that I have to get done. Or I have other responsibilities that I have to take care of. I can't say yes to my heart. I have to take care of the responsibilities that are weighing on me. There could be a heaviness and a weight. And this reminds me of the movie Love Actually. If you've seen the movie, drop me a comment. I absolutely love 
love this movie. For those of you who haven't seen it, this is your spoiler alert. In the movie, which is synchronistically set for around the holiday time, Sarah, played by Laura Linney, Sarah is pining after her extremely handsome hunky co-worker, Carl, played by Rodrigo Santora. Sarah has been pining after Rodrigo for some time now, for a really, really long time. And she really wants something to happen with Rodrigo. She's really ready. She's like on the verge. However, at the same time, Sarah is very loyal to her brother who lives in a facility for mentally challenged people. And her brother is constantly calling her on the phone for emotional support, like all the time, multiple calls a day. And she's very loyal. She picks up the phone every time. But the hall holiday party comes around and they're toasting with champagne and the lights are sparkling and love is in the air. The movie is love actually, after all. Love is in the air and Sarah finally, finally lets Rodrigo know in no uncertain terms that she's into him. They dance, they go home to her place. They're having a steamy encounter in her bedroom. And what happens? The phone rings and it's her brother. So she has a defining moment. There's a defining moment in this movie where Sarah has to decide, am I gonna pick up the phone and be there for my brother like I always am? Or am I gonna let myself have my heart's desire? Am I gonna let myself have this encounter with this, with this, amazing, hunky guy that I've been pining after forever. What am I gonna do? What does she do? She picks up the phone. I can't imagine that anyone watching that movie would have been happy at that moment. I know that my heart sank when she did that. Like, what are you doing? You don't have to be there for your brother in every single moment. It's your life. You get to have a life too. You deserve happiness too. So it's possible, my friend, that you could have some sort of moment like this around this Gemini full moon time when you are weighing your duties and responsibilities, maybe it's an old role that you've been playing for some time. This is Saturn and Pisces. This could be overgiving. This could be self-sacrificing. This could be where you have put your time and energy selflessly, even altruistically. And then something else comes up that you have wanted and you have to decide, you have to choose. The challenge with Saturn and Pisces, which as a reminder is squaring this full moon, is that Saturn in Pisces does not set boundaries very well. In Pisces energy, we can feel like it's our obligation to give, give, give until we are completely empty, completely drained. Wherever you have Saturn in Pisces in your natal astrology chart is where you may have been overly self-sacrificing. So this Gemini full moon is asking you, when is the last time you put yourself first? When is the last time you had an adventure? And is the self-sacrifice worth it to you? What's the payoff? And most important is it sustainable long-term because this again is a building full moon and Saturn is a building energy. Saturn and Pisces being the 12th sign of the zodiac Pisces energy is also about endings. This full moon may have you realize light bulb moment, epiphany, clarity. I have to let go of something. I have to bring an ending to something that has been draining me, that has where I've been self-sacrificing, where I've given too much, where I'm just not receiving back what I'm putting out. So you may realize you have to tweak something and how you're doing whatever you're doing. There may be a crack in the foundation. You may have to shore it up so that you, my friend, can receive more more of the juiciness, the fieriness, the spontaneity, the sparkliness of Gemini and Sagittarius energy. Because this is a potentially hectic time, busy time when we're doing a lot of errands, trying to get a lot of things done, socializing, also traveling a lot of us, we're definitely gonna pr have to prioritize what is most important, especially with Venus in Libra during this full moon. We're gonna be doing a balancing act and pausing. Saturn often requires us to pause, take a breather, take a moment to reflect on what do I need most now? What can I let go of? What can I put off so that I can actually enjoy myself during this time and not burn out? We also have Mercury in Sagittarius, Mercury in fiery Sagittarius making a square to Neptune retrograde in Pisces. 
Neptune in Pisces is what is your vision? What is your ideal? What does your ideal look like for whatever you're creating? With Mercury making a square to Neptune retrograde, there could be a disappointment. There could be a sense of disillusionment. There could be something, some sort of communication that happens or a realization that doesn't match up to the ideal. But my friend, what I want to encourage you to do is remember that all these mutable energies that are happening are about the process. This is a more process oriented time. This isn't so much about I need to accomplish this goal right now, but I'm in the process of tweaking and fine tuning and expect that you will be changing whatever you're working on during this time. It will likely involve some change. So if we can be less attached to the outcome and more in the moment of what we're experiencing and allow ourselves to really receive the beauty of this time, we'll be able to be much more in the flow of this energy. What you want to do may end up taking longer than you thought it was going to take. You may receive what we call a Saturn reality check that makes you realize, I thought I could do so much more than I can. My plate is way too full. I'm human and I need rest, especially with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, we need more rest. However, and this is a big have, however, we also have some gorgeous supportive energies that are telling us go for what you want. We have the Sun and Mars making a trine to the North Node in Aries. Sun and Mars firing us up, getting us inspired in fire, this fiery take a risk energy is saying go for what your heart wants. This is a destiny driven energy saying yes, go in this direction of what you're inspired to do. It is going to pay off for you. It just may take longer and it may be harder to sort of slog through a little bit of the resistance of Saturn to get there. So a few tips for you and then we're going to do this 12 sign readings. Ask the divine, your higher self, for answers if you get stuck. There's a lot of Pisces divine connection, oneness, receiving the downloads that you need to move through this energy. If you get confused, if you're not sure what to do, follow your intuitive guidance. What's most important to you now? Do that. Stay present. Focus on one thing. Don't let the Gemini scattered energy pull you in a million different directions. Choose one thing, one foot in front of the other, do that, and then go on to the next thing. Seize the moment, enjoy the fire burning in your belly. We haven't had this in a long time. And remember that your soul always knows the best thing for you. Okay, my beautiful friends. So let's do the 12 sign readings now. Listen for your rising sign. This is the area of life in which you are experiencing the full moon in Gemini. Also listen to your sun sign and your moon sign. Your sun sign is how your ego personality is going to experience these energies. And your moon sign is how you will feel this emotionally. So we're going to start with Gemini. Hello, beautiful Gemini. Gemini, this is your full moon. For those of you who are Gemini risings, this is happening in your first house of identity, the house of the self, the house of the I am, where you declare to spirit, to the world, who you are, how you want others to see you, how you want to see yourself. This is your sense of self. And Gemini, with a full moon here, something is coming to fruition. You could be starting in a new role, either personally in a relationship or professionally. You could be receiving a, a promotion. What were you thinking about? What were you seeding for intentions, Gemini? During the Gemini new moon, mid-year, that's when the energy of this full moon got going. That's when we jump started something new. So this full moon is when you're receiving the full, full fruition, the manifestation, or something's ending for you. You could be letting go of a relationship. You could be feeling like you are, have just gone through an ego death during Scorpio season. You are shedding a skin. You are a new person now. You're not the same person that you were before. Gemini, across from your first house, you have the seventh house of partnerships. That's where the sun and Mars in Sagittarius are lighting a fire in your belly. There is a new sense of identity in your relationships. You are bringing a new self to your relationships now, to your committed partnerships. That's clients, that's uh, anyone that you have a commitment with. So that would also be like a spouse or a committed partnership, uh, either personally or professionally. But with Mars here in Sag, you're being encouraged to take a risk in your relationship realm. 
to take a risk to come out more, to be more expressive, to tell people how you feel. Now, Gemini, your message from spirit is that you are ready. You are ready. You, you can do this. Whatever it is that you want next, believe in yourself. This is about self-belief. This uh, full moon makes a conjunction to any of your Gemini planets or points. And when we have a conjunction, this is a, we're on the same page with the energy of that planet or point, but it also feels like an intensity of that energy. So this full moon time could feel more intense to you. And this is where, as I said in the introduction, we have to make sure we're not piling our plate on too full with too much, where you could feel scattered and you could feel pulled in many directions. So I would encourage you, and I'm going to do this myself as a Gemini sun, to keep your load as light as you can around this full moon time so that you don't feel that you can't meet your responsibilities and commitments. Okay, so Gemini, I am shuffling the cards for you and let's see what, ooh, one just fell out. Okay, Gemini, your card is the first quarter moon in Pisces, honor your feelings. So a first quarter moon is often when we meet with a challenge or an obstacle that we have to move through in order to manifest our goal. And because this says, honor your feelings, that is, these are your marching orders, Gemini. And I think it's interesting that a lot of people say, oh, Geminis don't feel their feelings. Geminis are so intellectual. And we are, we do have an intellectual side, no question. But we do feel deeply, right, Gemini? We do feel deeply, but we don't always remember to feel the feelings and let them move through us and to process our feelings. So this card is saying you're going to have an opportunity to do that, and that is going to lighten your load even more and bring you even more into alignment vibrationally with what your heart wants most next. Okay, Taurus. Hello, beautiful Taurus. Taurus. You are experiencing the full moon in Gemini in your second house of material security. This is your house of earned income. This is your values, your self-esteem, your sense of deserving, your sense of worthiness, your prized possessions, your assets, materially speaking. So when you have a full moon here in your second house, you could have a fruition, a culmination, or an ending. Something, it, it's, it's, full moons are endings and new beginnings, something closing out, something beginning, which tells me that you are getting a new income stream coming in, or you're saying, I'm no longer happy with the amount of money I'm making. I need to make more money. I'm going to maybe do a side gig, or I'm going to a side hustle. That's what it is in today's terms. <laughs> do something on the side, or I'm going to look for a new job, or I'm going to start my own business. This could be a very exciting time for you, Taurus. Um, you are having this, or this could be around your values and your self-esteem and your self-love, because that is the basis, right, for what we earn. You could have an aha moment, an awakening, an epiphany around deserving, around what you know you deserve now. And you could say, if you have your own business, you could say, I'm raising my prices because I realize now that I'm worth more. I put so much time and energy into what I do, and I need to, um, my cup needs to be filled back up, right, Taurus? Okay, so you're having this uh, full this moon energy is across from the sun and Mars in your eighth house during this full moon. Your eighth house is shared resources, partnerships, power, intimacy, sexual and emotional intimacy. It's really the house of power. It's where we shed a skin. It's where we have a transformation. It's where we have a rebirth, a death and rebirth. So with the sun and Mars here, this is lighting up your desire to have more whatever wealth is for you, Taurus. However you see um, the comforts, the material security that you want in the world, and especially as it relates to like investments, uh, it could be loans, it could be taxes. Some of you could be doing your taxes around this time, um, early doing them, or, you know, I don't know when taxes are due in other countries, how that works. But um you could be really focused right now on uh, either in your partnerships, the money aspect, the, the possessions that you have. Some, some of you could be cutting ties to a partner with Mars here. Uh, I didn't say this earlier in the video, but Mars can also be where we, where we do set boundaries and we do cut, we cut the cords to things, we end things. Um, 
And with full moons, we often end something. So that could be happening for you in terms of your possessions and resources with a partner, or you could be changing your investments. You could be investing in something new or pulling money out of here and putting money there and so forth. Uh, your message from spirit, Taurus, is wipe the slate clean. There is some clearing here. There is, it's time to start with, with a brand new beginning. And because of that eighth house energy with Mars there, you could have a fight with a partner. I don't like to say that. I don't want to put that out there, but that could happen. So I want to bring it up. Or you could just feel frustration. You could feel like I'm not getting through to my partner about something that's really important to me, something that really matters to me. Um, but you have to stand your ground, Taurus. You have to, uh, you don't have to. <laughs> this is my, my encouragement is for you to stand your ground because you know what's best for you. You know what you need. And your soul is guiding you. So you don't, that's why I think Spirit's saying wipe the slate clean. Release your past. You are not your past. What happened to you in the past is, um, is over and done with. And this Gemini full moon is really a brand new beginning energy. Gemini is very alchemical and sparkly and, and, um, and magical in its highest octave. And it will help us to raise our vibration if we can release the past and wipe the slate clean. So, Taurus, now let us pull a card for you. Ooh, another one. Oh my gosh, the cards are falling out today. What is this card? It fell out onto the floor and it, ooh, oh my gosh, I love this card, Taurus. Full moon in Leo, go wild. Oh my God. Okay, this is the Sag energy coming through. Big, big, big. Go wild. That Sag energy. Throw caution to the wind. Go for it. Express yourself. Look at the pride in this lion. Look at all of the red orange energy. This red orange to me is really second house energy. It's very much second house is that like our instinctual knowing of what we need to survive in the world. And this is saying, express, express Taurus, express your joy, express your wild side. I'm feeling as you do that, there's something surprising, beautifully surprising and synchronistic and joyful and delightful to your inner child, delightful to your passionate self that's going to come through if you give yourself permission to let go during this full moon in Gemini. If this resonates, leave me a comment. I love this card. Okay, Aries. Hello, beautiful Aries. Aries, you are having the full moon in Gemini in your third house of, it's really Gemini energy. The third house is connected to Gemini, okay? In the, the big picture of the zodiac wheel. This is your communication, your mindset. It's your local arena. It's your hood. It is neighbors and siblings and aunts, uncles, and cousins. It's everything that goes on into your regular everyday world, where you work out, where you go to yoga, where you buy your groceries, the phone calls that you make of people that live in your, um, in your local area. This is the location. Are you happy in this location? As a full moon, does this is bringing something to fruition or manifestation for you or clarity and this could be clarity around where do you want to live do you still want to live here you could be taking a short trip during this time that is um awakening for you in some way uh this is also the house of writing like doing blog writing this is emails this is your devices it's transportation it's like uh, so much of our everyday stuff so much of our errand stuff and because this is happening around the holidays in the U.S. anyway, you may be finding yourself quite busy. Usually uh, when we have a lunation in our third house, we are, we've got a lot on our plate. We're doing a lot of everyday things that feel like little things, but they add up. They take our energy. So you want to be aware of that. You want to make sure that you really are pacing yourself. You're not burning out. You're not overgiving. Um, you do get a sextile from the full moon to your energy Aries, which will be really nice. Um, but remember that Gemini energy likes to move really quickly and so does Aries energy. So be careful, especially with the Mars making a conjunction to the sun and opposing the moon. Be careful, drive slower maybe than usual. I have Mars and Aries, so I do tend to drive at times a little bit faster than I should, I have to admit. But only because you have places to go, right, Aries? We have to get somewhere. But during this moon, I think you're definitely, I really encourage you to go a little bit slower, take your time, pace yourself, and let go of whatever you just don't have time for. 
you're, you're probably going to have to do that. You're, you may have to cut something out. There just may not be time for it all. Right now, you can get to it later. Where the sun and Mars and Sag are, where you are probably feeling inspired and, and revved up and raring to go, Aries during this full moon is in your ninth house of adventure, expansion, long distance travel, um, also your spirituality and higher learning. So you could be signing up for a new course. You could be getting inspired to travel. Some of you might book some sort of a trip that would be a long distance trip. Um, but this is definitely where you're getting the fire lit in your belly for a new adventure, Aries. Um, and it's coming to me again to mention my book, The Magic of Saying Yes, Answering Your Heart's True Calling. If you're in a transitionary period, if you are in a time where you're trying to figure out what your heart most wants, the link to my book is in the description box below. You might really enjoy that during this time. Aries, your message from spirit is that you are fired up during this moon. And because you're so fired up, it's important to be intentional, to get really clear on what your intention is. How do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? What is the outcome you want to have? And maximize your energy by having that intention. Because as you know, where intention goes, your energy will flow. Okay, so now let's pull a card for you. Aries, I'm shuffling. Ah, woo, the energy is moving. It is moving through. It is, I'm feeling it intensely, but in a really nice way. Okay, so your card is, oh, this is so sweet. Okay, so we have Venus and Libra during this full moon, and this is Libra energy, your card. It's the, the new moon in Libra, know that you are loved. So new moons are brand new beginnings, and this energy is infusing, this newness is being infused through this full moon for you, this newness of all the purple, which is heart, um, not heart, I said heart, that's, that's Venus for sure, but uh, um, <laughs> I will get the words out, crown chakra, your crown chakra, your purple uh, connection to the divine with all the energies in Pisces that I shared in the introduction to this video, if you didn't watch that, I encourage you to go back with all that Pisces energy that's what this is. This is divine connection. This is the highest octave of love, unconditional love. So this card is saying connect with unconditional love if you need to. And because it's a Libra energy, to me, this is around relationships. You may have something come up during this, this full moon that is around a relationship or around um, maybe your desire that you're creating for the future has to do with a relationship planting a seed that is a, a relationship in which you feel loved, unconditionally loved, where you feel seen, where you feel acknowledged, where you feel cherished. Beautiful Aries. Let me know if this resonates for you. I would love to hear. Okay, Pisces. Hello, beautiful Pisces. Pisces, you're having this full moon in your fourth house of home, family, childhood conditioning. This is where you're going to have a manifestation, a fruition, a culmination, something coming full circle from the mid-June period where we set our intentions, where we planted our seeds during the new moon in Gemini. You could have something to do, something that's closing up or changing or shifting in your home. You could be moving, you could be getting a new home, you could be remodeling, building a new home, or this could have to do with your family. This could have to do with your family of origin or your family that you have created um, with your own children, for example, or childhood conditioning, having a healing in terms of something that happened when you were very young that was wounding to you that you are, have, are now healing or has healed that is allowing you to go forward in positive, powerful ways. Pisces, and I'm, I'm looking at this, my daughter's Pisces rising and she's about to move into a new house. So, so perfect. So um, in your 10th house, Pisces, this is your career, your, your fulfillment, your sense of meaning, retirement, legacy, semi-retirement for some of you. But this is how you want to spend your time. This is where you're most passionate. This is the house of vocation. This is where the sun and Mars is. So something is being lit up for you. Something's being highlighted in this area of career and fulfillment and meaning for you. This is where you're going to feel some inspiration, I think, Pisces. Um, and so you could really be thinking now about, you know, this is, brings up your identity, how you feel about yourself, how you want to use your life force energy around career. 
Um, and with this being um, the Mars and with Mars and the Sun being conjunct here, you will really, I think, feel some new inspiration. You're very creative, Pisces. You're most of you are very artistic, so you may really be feeling like the the your inner designer, your inner artist, really speaking to you, giving you a voice, giving you new ideas, giving you new inspiration. Your message from spirit is, what have you had it with Pisces? This Gemini full moon does make a square to your energy, squares our tension and pressure. They do get us moving. They do activate us. They do have us uh, feeling some pressure to get going, to take action or to make a decision. And so spirit said, and I'm really curious if any of you relate to this. So let me know in the comments if you do, please. I'd love to hear um, what have you had it with? What are you ready to let go of? It's time. Spirit says it's time to let go of anything that you've just had it. <laughs> I've had it. My mom used to say that a lot as a kid. I've had it with you kids. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm laughing because it was like probably the most harsh thing she ever said. So she was a very gentle soul. Um, okay. So let's pull a card for you, Pisces. <sighs> Your card is forgive, full moon in Pisces. You can't make this stuff up. Pisces, this is your card. Check it out. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This card is so beautiful. There's so much green healing heart ch chakra energy here. And then all the purple, which is your divine guidance. And when I see this um, opening in the water and I see... I. I'm just going to say it because I see it. <laughs> I see a vulva here and I feel like that's, and I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anyone, but to me, it's so obvious. This is divine feminine energy. Wow. 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 This is really bringing up your divine feminine power to part the waters. And, and, and so for some of you, this forgive is going to have to do with a love relationship with like a sexually intimate relationship. And for others of you, this is maybe re re forgiving a parent, forgiving a um, somebody who's been significant in your life so that you can let go. This is what you've had it with, like Spirit said, what you are so done with. Um, and I also see, and I don't think, I think these are flowers, but but I see from the distance that I'm in, this looks like a very, like a, a nun sort of energy, like a very, like Mother Mary Kuan Yin kind of energy. And it's so interesting because when I look at it close up, oh, there is, oh, the fish are here. The fish are here. This top of the fish looks very, with the flower together, to me looked very um, spiritual, like um, a prayerful figure. So if you need help in forgiving, call on with whoever you work with, Pisces, whether it is like Mother Mary or Kuan Yin or some um, divine feminine energy or the goddess that you work with to help you forgive. Sometimes we need help. Sometimes we can't do it in our human self and we have to say, help me to get to the place where I can forgive and let this go. Because as you know, forgiving with compassion is just saying, come pass on, let it go. It's time for the new Pisces. It's time for your new, fresh beginning. Okay, Aquarius. Hello, beautiful Aquarius. Aquarius, some of you have said you like it when I sing to you. And that makes me so happy because even though I don't have a performance quality voice, you're still okay with it. So I'm going to sing to you, Aquarius. Aquarius, Aquarius, you know we're going into 2024. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. We are going into this new age with Pluto going into Aquarius. Let me know how you feel about that in the comments, Aquarius. I would love to know. Um, and because I'm doing my 2024 year ahead readings, you can book one of those and I will be letting you know whether it's touching any of your planets or points and how you can best prepare for it. Aquarius, you're having the Gemini full moon in your fifth house of play and adventure and your inner child, delighting your inner child. This is the house of delight. This is your full on unbridled creative expression, giving that child within you full permission to make mistakes, to get messy, to get a little wild. The, the Ms. Frizzle Magic School Bus quote that I love so much. Make mistakes, get messy. Now I'm forgetting the last part of it, Aquarius. <laughs> but 
this is your house of pleasure. This is the where we go out and do fun things. And that's what the Sag energy during this full moon is really encouraging us to do. It's also your house of children. So with a full moon here, some of you could find out you're pregnant. Some of you could have a a book or a piece of music or a one person show or something that you've been creating and working on come to fruition. Put You're putting it out into the world. Um, some of you could be feeling finally free. Freedom is such a signature of this full moon with Gemini and Sag energies. Both want freedom. You could be feeling a real yes to freeing yourself in some way giving yourself what you know you want. And of course, this is the house of true love and romance. This is the house of dating. So some of you could also say, I'm finally going to start my, uh, write that online profile, or I'm finally going to say yes to this date with someone. Across the uh, way from the moon is the sun and Mars in Sagittarius in your 11th house of friendships, community, causes, um, alliances. This is the house of the, of support, really, like where we join groups of like-minded people. This is the house of your tribe. Also hopes, wishes, and dreams. The house of fulfillment and happiness, but also long-term gains financially. This is where you're fired up. This is where the sun and Mars are lighting the spark for you, the drive, the motivation, to create in this area of your life. So some of you could be thinking about like investments and long-term gains. Others of you could just be like, I'm ready for support. I need to find my tribe. I'm ready to do, take the steps to do that. And some of you might be spending your holidays with uh, like-minded friends that really boosts you as well, boosts your heart energy. Um, you Aquarius are getting a trine. You're getting a trine from the full moon, which is positive energy flow, wind at your back. There's nothing you really need to do except to just get on the sailboat and go. The sailboat's going to take you. Your message from spirit is go with the flow one step at a time. If you feel overwhelmed, which a lot of us may during this Gemini full moon, I gave the details of why and how to work with that in the beginning of the energy, in the beginning of the video. But if you feel some overwhelm during this time, just go one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, and try not to pile on too much Aquarius during this time so that you can enjoy yourself. Fifth house full moon. Ooh, that's luscious. You want to enjoy the lusciousness of it all. <laughs> I'm laughing because I feel like I'm talking so fast. Okay, so Aquarius, let's pull a card for you. Aquarius, you get a trine from this full moon. And your card is, ooh, Aquarius. First of all, guess what? New moon in Aquarius. <laughs> And it says, open up to change. What change are you about to embark on? Gemini and Sag energies move us through change, mutable energies. Your energy is fixed. It doesn't like change as much as Sag and the mutable signs that Gemini do. Uh, not, not, now, I'm a Gemini sun. I can say, I, I wouldn't say, I love change. I love it. I love, no, I wouldn't say that. I would not say that, but I know that change can be quite exciting and surprising and joyful. And we, I love spontaneity as long as it doesn't hurt. <laughs> so Aquarius, open up to change. Open up to the new possibilities. Look at all the pink in this card, the beautiful blooming flowers. I see a lot of spring in this card. And of course, it's a new moon card. So Something here is saying that you are going to experience some change in the spring, I feel. And if you open up to it now, it will be easier and it will be more blooming. It will be more um, fortifying and you will feel yourself blooming. If you give yourself permission to do things a little bit differently, to dismantle the box, go outside of your normal thinking, as I spoke about in my Jupiter conjunct Uranus video that I encourage you to check out if you haven't yet. That's all about a big change that we're going to be experiencing in the spring. So Aquarius, if this resonates, let me know. Let me know what is going on with you and how this is. Um, are you looking forward to this full moon in Gemini? I'd love to hear. Okay, Capricorn. Hello, beautiful Capricorns. Capricorn, 
you're experiencing the Gemini full moon in your sixth house, your sixth house of daily health, wellness, what you eat, how you move your body, your work, your schedules, your routines. This is very much of a health house, very much of how can I feel happier, more well in my body, in my mind, in my spirit. So Capricorn, there's something happening for you here in terms of culmination, a fruition, a manifestation. This could relate to a job. Some of you could be getting a new job or letting go of a job. Full moons are endings or beginnings after all. Also something that you have that you started in your uh, having to do with like a physical exercise routine or uh, changing your diet could uh, come to fruition here. Or you could have a light bulb moment about, I have to stop eating that. I have to stop <laughs> going to uh, the cookies at nine o'clock at night, or um, I'm going to let go of alcohol, or I'm going to start stretching every day or do yoga regularly, any of those kinds of things. Um, this is uh, something coming to fruition to do with your wellness uh, or your work, your everyday work, or your, your schedule. Some of you could be changing where you work, um, working at home versus working in the office, uh, or a hybrid of those things. We never had that term before, the hybrid work situation. It's so wild how the world has changed. But I love that we have more flexibility, and you may want more flexibility, Capricorn. You could even be saying, I'm starting my own business now. I'm done with working outside the home. I want to work in my home, or I want to work for myself, and I'm starting fresh, and I'm doing it. Now, where you're going to have the fire burning in your belly, where the sun and Mars are coming together to inspire you, Capricorn is in your 12th house. It's in your 12th house. That's where you're going to have Mars lighting you up. Now, you could be cutting ties to an old story, an old narrative, inner narrative about yourself and your life. That would be really beautiful. This is the house where we reprogram our subconscious mind, where we have... Uh, go into retreat where we have mystical awakenings. This is your house of the mystic. So um, you could really have an illumination. You could really receive some sort of epiphany or aha or um, realization around your life and how you do your life and how you see yourself and, and, and the inner dialogue that goes on in your life. This is an opportunity to change that inner dialogue. Or maybe you start doing affirmations. Maybe you start listening to guided meditation, um, mind reprogramming uh, audios at night while you're sleeping, for example, to change change that. But this is also a very inspiring imaginative house where you can create a whole new vision for your life, a vision board or a deep guided meditation that takes you into a hole where you can really get sparked and inspired by what comes to you during a guided meditation. And by the way, Capricorn, I do have some free guided meditations for you on my YouTube channel. I always link to that playlist in my description box below the video so that you can um, be led and guided by me to connect to your heart's true essence, to the next thing in your life, or just get an image or something that sparks you, that sparks your imagination and, and fires you up. Uh, your message from Spirit Capricorn was, I'm going to explain this because it might sound a little weird at first, but it was divide and conquer. <laughs> and, it, and it didn't, it's not in the, the way of like, a negative connotation at all. It was more like, you know, when you walk into a room and you see like the room is a mess and, or like it's your garage and you haven't cleaned your garage for years and you're like, oh my God, or your basement or your attic or whatever. And you're like, this is so overwhelming. It's so much. I don't know what to do. Um, get support. That's what the divide and conquer is. It's like Break it into chunks. Do not think you have to do it all at once. Do not think you have to do it all by yourself. Get support. Hire somebody to help you. If, if this, this could be like mental clutter. It could be physical clutter. It could be house clutter. Uh, it could be a lot of different things. But the whole point of the message to you from Spirit is that if you feel overwhelmed, delegate, get support. Don't try to do it all by yourself. You can break it into chunks if it's physical work and you can make a lot of headway and that will really lighten your load for whatever is coming next for you, Capricorn. So as I've been chatting with you, I've been shuffling. <sighs> I just feel like this energy is so big. Um, 
Maybe it's partly because it's my full moon too, but okay. I always channel the energy of the moon before it happens while I'm doing these videos for you guys. So I really feel it. It's very intense, but intense in a good way. Okay, so Capricorn. Your card, I'm coming back into my center now. <laughs> it's a good thing when you can crack yourself up, Capricorn. Okay. So your card is full moon in Sagittarius and that we got a lot of Sag energy here. See the bigger picture. This is that zooming out energy. And this reminds me of that message from spirit about divide and conquer, like zoom out, get perspective. Don't let your human self get overwhelmed by whatever situation you're in, whatever errands you're doing, whatever you have piled on your plate, perhaps. Don't let that happen. You need new perspective. Some of you will during this time. Sag energy is all about truth and seeing the light, seeing the truth, right? So um, if you just need to take moments, you could go on a hike, but if you don't have time to go on a hike or you're not in a climate where you can do that comfortably, then maybe just take some moments. You can even visualize yourself in a meditation on the top of a mountain seeing your life below you, seeing, getting that perspective so that it doesn't feel so big, so heavy. You are a mountain climber, Capricorn. You love the big goals. You love the achievement and you're very good at it. But taking some time to step back and zoom out will allow you to put it all in perspective and not feel like any of it is too much. So if this makes sense, if this resonates, I'd love to hear, let me know in the comments below. Okay, Sagittarius, hello, beautiful Sag. Sag, you, this is really like your full moon too. It's a full moon in Gemini, but there is so much Sagittarius energy. We have the sun in Sag, and by the way, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot momentarily. Happy birthday, Sag, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy, now I'm going to cry. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> happy birthday, beautiful Sag. I can't sing the rest because I'm joking up. I have no idea why. Sagittarius, happy, happy, beautiful birthday to all of you early born Sages, especially. That's why I was like, this is your full moon. But we have sun in Sag. Mars and Sag, Mercury and Sag. Wow, like your whole, for those of you who are Sag rising, your whole first house is so lit up. This is could be very well awakening energy for you. Your first house. Um, okay, the, the full, let me step back for a moment. The full moon is happening in your seventh house of committed partnerships, clients, spouses, boyfriend, girlfriends, adult children, anyone that means a lot to you where you have a spoken or unspoken commitment to have each other's backs, that's where the full moon is happening. That's where there's a culmination of manifestation, an ending for some of you. Some of you could be ending a relationship. I'm sorry if you're going through the pain of that. Um, others of you could be visioning the kind of relationship that you really want to have. Others of you could be sparking a new partnership here. This is Gemini energy is spontaneous. It can be sparkly. It can be very synchronistic things happening, magical moments happening. Um, this could be really beautiful if this happens. This could even bring a healing about in a partnership for you, Sagittarius, especially if that's your intention. Now, uh, what I was speaking about before in your first house for Sag Risings, this is where your sun, the sun, Mars, and Mercury are, this is where you're focused on your identity. This is your, the roles you're playing at work or in your personal life, in your family, with your friends. Um, you could be getting a new job. You could be starting a new business. Anything where your title, whether on a personal or professional level, your title, what you're calling yourself, is changing a new title, perhaps. This could be happening. Also, you can change your appearance. You could say, I'm just, I'm going to have a whole new look. I'm going to give away my clothes and I'm gonna, gonna get a whole new wardrobe. That sounds really fun. Um, you could be cutting ties to an old identity. Something, an old identity could have died for you during Scorpio season. And you could be saying, I am I feel like a brand new person now. I feel completely different in my skin. That's often when we want to change our wardrobe, right? Because our clothes just don't 
fit us anymore, the new, the new you. Um, so spirit says, because this full moon is making an opposition to your energy, you will likely feel the sag in your partnerships, in your relationships. You will feel this through another person or an external situation. Um, because of that, you may have a rebirth. You may have a rebirth. Um, and your message from spirit is that, and you know, before re a rebirth is, is a death process to an ego death where something goes away, something leaves. And that's, that's not easy. I don't want to minimize the, the impact of that, the emotions of that, but rebirths are absolutely, um, joyful new beginnings. And so that is on offer for you. And your message from spirit about this rebirth is that you are going to now feel more in your power, more assertive. Um, and I know a lot of you are like, I'm always assertive, <laughs> but more assertive, more ready to speak your truth and what you need and what you want than ever before, Sag. Okay, so all of that said, let's pull a card for you and see what the cards have to say for you for this Gemini full moon. And you know, some of you are having birthdays right around this time, which is so exciting. And your card is make time for self-love, the last quarter moon in Libra. So I'm not surprised that you would get this card when you're having a full moon in your seventh house of partnerships and when the sun, Mars, and Mercury in your sign are in your first house of the self. Make time for self-love. With Mercury in your first house for Sag Risings, you may want to begin to speak sweetly to yourself, write love notes to yourself, give yourself the messages that you didn't hear when you were a child, the loving, cherishing, nourishing messages that will remind you and your inner child of who you really are, beautiful Sag. Um, there's a lot of purple energy. There's a lot of, of an invitation here to pull down energy from the divine to sit and receive or dance, dance your prayers and receive uh, during a full moon ritual, perhaps receive the unconditional love of the divine of your soul. Beautiful Sagittarius. Okay, Scorpio. Hello, beautiful Scorpio. Happy birthday to those of you who have your birthday at the very end of Scorpio season and congratulations for making it through Scorpio season. Scorpios, I know that you are used to that deep diving intensity, but uh, for, uh, talking to my daughter who has a Scorpio moon, it was quite intense for a lot of Scorpios. So I hope that you feel like in Sag energy, you're coming out of it, you're bursting through the water, so to speak, and you see the sunlight and you're ready to feel lighter now. You're ready to feel lighter. So Scorpio, you are going to experience this full moon in Gemini in your eighth house. And I know this is not a house of lightness. This is a house of power. This is you asserting your power. This is the house of intimacy, your emotional connections, your deep emotional connections with others, your um, physical, you know, your sexuality, your, uh, it's a very deep, deep energy, your resources that you share with other people, your investments, taxes, you know, loans and debts. This can feel like a heavy energy, I have to say, and I don't want that for you, Scorpio. But I hope that Gemini energy during this full moon brings you a lightness. And because we also have Sagittarius energy, we have the sun and Mars in the second house, bringing you some fire. You've got fire coming to you in your second house of values and your, your immediate, like your, all of your prized possessions, um, any assets, um, your earned income, all of your, like your shelter, all of your material, the things that bring you material security and safety and sense of comfort and well-being physically, the stuff you can touch and feel, <laughs> including the money you hand to people to buy the things that you want. This is, this is where the sun and Mars and Sag, they're lighting up this area for you. So this is where you could be getting new, 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 new ideas and, and, and fire burning in your belly where you could feel ignited 
to do something different, to make money in a different way, to get a new job, to, or just feeling like I, you love yourself in a new way. You could have a whole new level of sen a sense of deserving and self-love in this area, Scorpio, because of what you've been through, because you've shed a skin during your birthday season. Your message from spirit is claim it. And I'm like, what are you talking about, spirit? Claim it. And the answer is I have a fan on me and it's blowing, it's blowing the hair in my face. Okay. Claim it. It is your birthright to feel wonderful. Words from spirit. Be true to yourself, Scorpio. It's your birthright to be happy. It's your birth. Yeah. We're none of us are happy all the time. I get that. But knowing a lot of Scorpios in my life, including people in my family that I'm intimately connected to. It's been my experience that Scorpios can deprive themselves at times from that deep, deep feeling of contentment, well-being, rootedness, and just knowing that, yes, it is your birthright. You are entitled to feel wonderful on a regular basis. Not all the time. We're human. Our emotions fluctuate. You have deep emotions. I know that, that you feel. But I hope that I'm expressing this in the way that it's meant to be expressed, that you deserve to be happy, beautiful Scorpio. You deserve it. Okay, so let me pull a card for you now and see what the card has, cards have to say. <sighs> Scorpio. Scorpio, your card is... <laughs> oh my gosh, you're going to laugh. Lighten up, lighten up. <laughs> the last quarter moon in Leo. So a last quarter moon is often when we're feeling like a winding down energy, like a waning energy, we're releasing, we're letting go. And if you haven't done all the releasing that you needed to do in order to feel good, beautiful Scorpio, in order to feel light, in order to experience laughter and joy and delight and reconnect with that inner child and give your inner child permission to have the joy that she or he deserves, then this is your, <laughs> this is your assignment. <laughs> this is your assignment to lighten up. And when I look at this card, the colors in this card, I'm really um, struck by the oranginess, the orangey red, which to me is both the root chakra, but also the sacral chakra, where we move our hips, where we dance, where we allow ourselves to come more alive, where we allow ourselves to feel the sensual pleasures of life, that creativity chakra, and that is your sexuality too, Scorpio. So there's something in this card for you, and this person, it looks, feels to me like this person, I can't really tell, but it feels to me like this person is maybe in water. There's a lot of blue here, and then a lot of the green heart chakra. It's a very fertile card. So give yourself the laughter. Listen to funny videos, or go out and call a friend that makes you laugh, or <laughs> make somebody else laugh. But whatever you do, experience the lightness that comes with Gemini energy. I know Saturn is squaring this moon, which can be a killjoy. But allow yourself to intend lightness. Intend lightness, Scorpio, and you shall experience it where intention goes, energy flows. Okay, Libras. Hello, beautiful Libra. Libra, you are experiencing this Gemini full moon. In your ninth house, your ninth house of expansion, of spiritual beliefs, of higher learning, new scenery, long distance travel. This is the house of being open to new possibilities, new horizons, fresh new beginnings that are elevating to your spirit. What a beautiful place, Libra, to have this energy. And Libra, you are getting a trine from the Gemini energy to your energy. This is the wind at your back. This is getting on the cruise ship or the sailboat, whatever your preference would be, and sailing forward. Wind at your back, people waiting on you, people giving you things, people treating you. I feel this really lovely, lovely energy for all of you. Um, you could be doing here some sort of new learning program. You could be graduating because the full moon is graduation. It's culmination. It's something ending and something new beginning. 
you could be graduating from some sort of program or something that you did that was really hard for you. You could be leaving a religion behind. You could be uh, taking a new course in something metaphysical or something that really lifts you, that really buoys you up and makes you feel like you are in a hot air balloon flying above your life, feeling joyful, sipping champagne or whatever your favorite drink is, Libra. Okay, Libra, you're also having a lot of energy here with this full moon, with the sun and Mars in Sagittarius, a lot of fire energy, a lot of inspiration and, and um, elevating your emotions in your third house of your regular everyday environment, your immediate environment. Um, also, this could be relationships with a neighbor or a sibling or an aunt, uncle, or cousin or a landlord. Um, this is all the people you come into contact with in your local environment, including your networking connections. So this is where there's something new coming to you that is lighting you up, that's exciting you, that's getting you ready, that's, that's, that's making you want to do something new or different or setting a new goal. Libra, your message from spirit is you are overdue. <laughs> You're overdue for a win or a break. It's time for you to get a break. It's time for you to get a new, I'm, I'm getting the word prize, like to have something that you feel like is a win, is a prize, is a victory. It's time for a victory for you is what Spirit said. How cool is that? Also, by the way, in your ninth house where the Gemini energy is, this is publishing also. So you could be putting something out into the world. You could be Seeing something come to fruition that you put a lot of hard work into up to this point, something perhaps that you started in mid-June, which was when we had the Gemini New Moon. So Libra, this is all really, really good news for you. And let me see what the cards have to say for you. What is your message from the cards? <sighs> Libra. Your card is... Last quarter moon in Gemini, clear your mind. So Libra, you may have a lot of things going on during this moon that make you feel overwhelmed, even if they're really good things, even if it's stuff to celebrate. You could be doing a lot of celebrating actually during this full moon and you could get a little bit foggy, especially with Mercury and um, Neptune retrograde squaring. Things could be a little foggy. You could just feel a little bit, uh, your energy could get slowed down by that. And that's why I think this is saying clear your mind. If you need clarity, if something comes up, if you're having trouble making a decision, Gemini energy, that's the full moon. Sometimes we have, as I said earlier in the video, in the introduction, sometimes we have trouble making decisions in Gemini energy. Two things. I'm a Gemini sun, and I'm whenever I go out to eat, I'm always trying to decide between two things. <laughs> I'm telling you, it happens every time. It's always like this or that, or we could go here, or we could go there, or we could see this movie or that movie. There's always two options that look equally good, and for some reason, it's hard to decide. So in case that's the two sides of Gemini energy, right? So in case you're having trouble deciding, do something that clears your mind. Take a walk. Go to the top of a mountain float in water so that you can get a sense of what is really true for you. Your soul knows, your intuition will tell you. And if you need help deciding something, you can do an astrology consultation with me or a clarity session. But I hope you enjoy this full moon, beautiful Libra, because it is trining your energy and that is positive ease, grace, and energy flow. So leave me a comment. Let me know. If this resonates for you, I'd love to hear. Okay, Virgos. Hello, beautiful Virgo. Virgo, you are having this Gemini full moon in your 10th house of career, life purpose, fulfillment, legacy, retirement, semi-retirement. This is the house of where you want to spend your one wild and precious life according to Mary Oliver and the wildness is very much a part of one of the themes of this moon is giving yourself permission to go a little wild, Virgo, which I have a lot of Virgo energy in my chart. So I know it's not always easy to, for Virgos to give our, yourself that kind of permission um, because you are so 
meticulous. You are so um, devoted, disciplined, so many things that can make it difficult for you to just let loose and go wild. So that message is coming through to me for you. Uh, but this is where you're going to have some sort of culmination, ending, or manifestation in this area of career. Some of you will start a new business. Some of you will wrap up a business. Some of you will retire. Some of you will say, I'm ready for a whole new lifestyle. I'm ready to leave my job. Um, Gemini energy is, can bring you a lot of new ideas, new information. Um, it could be very sparkly for you. It could really inspire you. You also receive some inspiration from Mars and the Sun and Sagittarius, fiery inspiration. Go do it. Make a change in your fourth house of home. So some of you might move. Some of you may uh, change up your home environment in some way or do kind of some new beautifying or remodeling. Um, or feel like a very strong um, urge to relocate or to, for some reason, as I'm looking at my notes right now, I'm getting this very strong direct, <laughs> directed energy to the sun. And the sun is your identity, yes, but it's also a male figure oftentimes. So this could have to do with a male figure for some of you. Some of you could be moving in with a male friend or a spouse or a lover. Um, some of you, this could have to do with your father in some way. I don't know why, but I just keep looking at that word son and it's like male energy. And of course, we all have male, female energy. This is archetypal, archetypally, but some of you may experience this in, in a literal way as well. So I wanted to mention that. Virgo, you're receiving a square from this full moon to your energy, which means that you will possibly feel pressure or tension to take some sort of action. Squares motivate us. If we didn't have squares in our chart, natal chart, for example, we wouldn't get a lot of things done. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are the things that make us, uh, get us moving. They light the fire underneath us, as we say. So because you have Saturn in your seventh house during this full moon and Saturn is making a square to the full moon, you could feel some pressure in a relationship or there could be an authority figure like a boss or um, a father, for example, that is coming through that you're perceiving is somehow controlling you <laughs> or pressuring you in some way. Of course, you have the ultimate control, Virgo, when you take back your power. So some of you may experience this. It's time to take back your power. Spirit's message to you is collect yourself if you need to. Pause, rest, go within, um, get clarity from your higher self. And most important, if you have to say something to someone, stand up to someone in a relationship, say what you need to say with love and compassion for yourself and for them. Say what you need to say, and it will be quite liberating for you, Virgo. Okay, and I'm really curious if these messages, because those last couple of messages were very intuitive, so I'm really curious to see if, if any of that resonates with you. Let me know. I'd love to hear. Okay, Virgo. And this could also be just something that comes up for you from childhood, from your past, having to do with parenting or, you know, how you were parented, your father, childhood conditioning. Virgo, your message is step into your power. Oh my goodness. That is exactly what the, your message from spirits was saying is about you standing your ground and being in your power. This is the first quarter moon in Aries. A first quarter moon, we're often meeting a challenge. We're confronting an obstacle. We're facing something and moving through it. We're moving through it. We're releasing or purging or letting something go or standing our ground, saying what we need to say in order to move on, um, to go our path. And if you look at this card, Virgo, she's doing this gorgeous uh, yoga position. She's leaning back. She's very much in her grace and her elegance, very much in her body. And Virgo, I know a lot of you, I know a lot of Virgos who are yoga teachers. I'm not saying all of you are yoga teachers by or do yoga, but Virgo energy usually 
knows that being in, a, being in your body at least is very healthy for you and really brings you back. So it takes you into your center. So doing something physical will bring you back into your center. Look at all the glow in this card. There's like this pink purplish energy, but it's very elegant to me. The way the colors are very elegant, very subdued, very soft. Um, and I just feel like all of this light coming down into your heart chakra. So doing something heart opening would be good for you. Stand in your power and you will soar forward, beautiful Virgo. Okay, Leo. Hello, beautiful Leo. Leo, you're having the full moon in Gemini in your 11th house of friendships, supporters, alliances, groups, causes, organizations that lift you up, that support you, that vibe with you. This is your house of tribe. This is your house of long-term gains as well financially and your hopes, wishes, and dreams. So what a beautiful place to have an ending or a culmination. And when I say ending, we don't, you know, our human selves don't want to hear that word ending. But if it's an ending, it's something that's wrapping up for you because it's no longer on your soul's path and it's opening the, the doors. It's opening room. It's opening a pathway is what I'm seeing right now. I am seeing light, light a pathway lit up for you for something new, new tribe, new friendships, new support, Leo, um, new money coming in, unexpected money for some of you, a new dream, new level of fulfillment. You're getting a sextile from this moon, this full moon in Gemini, Leo, a sextile, which is an opportunity or multiple opportunities or solutions. It's something being taken care of or something coming to light that is helping move you forward that you didn't see before the full moon. And where the sun and Mars and Sagittarius are firing you up and giving you inspiration and, and just igniting your creativity is in your fifth house of children and of love and romance. And so some of you Leos could be feeling quite romantic during this Gemini full moon. We also have Venus in Libra during this full moon, which is also making a sextile to your energy. So you could, some of you could be starting a new romance during this full moon. You could be dating um, and really enjoying that. Um, uh, or doing, uh, getting um, a seed of inspiration, I would say, for a new endeavor or putting something out in the world. Maybe something is coming to, into full bloom for you, your own creative project or, you know, anything. Creativity is, is everything, right? We're creative beings, but you, your life being a work of art, Leo, you putting something that is your own expression that lights you up, that's connected to your inner child, that is your free unbridled, um, <laughs> The word expression keeps coming. I'm trying to vary it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, express, express, express. That's the word. Those, that's what, what your spirit is wanting right now is for you really to, I see all these colors. And I see your true colors shining through, beautiful Leo. Oh, I'm so glad to be through <laughs> with Eclipse and Scorpio season because I'm finally feeling this like, letting go with this new, with this full moon. I hope that we all feel it. I hope you all feel this letting go energy. Your message from spirit, Leo, is go for it. It's your time. There's a new opportunity on offer for you, Leo. If you're going to claim this new opportunity, you want to claim this, claim it below. Say it. I claim it. I claim it. <laughs> Now the silliness is coming through, but that's where the sun and Mars are in your fifth house. And I'm feeling that that silly inner child, crack yourself up, be free, get messy, do it all. Okay. And this card just flipped over and this is your card, Leo. And it says, okay, this is going to be, <laughs> it says work through your feelings, last quarter moon in Aries. Some of you are going to be like, wah, 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 wah. I don't want to hear that. But what can keep us from living passionately, Leo? You're a passionate, passionate person. You know this. What can keep us is having a heaviness or feelings that may come up. And if any feelings come up during this moon, um, it could be just because 
you're going to the next level. Like you really are. You are challenging yourself. There is a Saturn square, as I spoke about earlier in the video, that I encourage you to watch. A lot of you just watch your readings, I know, and I feel like you miss so much because I basically tell you how to work with these energies and what the aspects are during the intro. But if you didn't hear that, that is, we are, we're leveling up. We are creating a whole new foundation for ourselves. And so where there could be even just a little hairline crack in your foundation of what your heart wants most, working through your feelings is going to release that energy. Um, and the last quarter moon in Aries is, you know, Aries is fire like you. There's a lot of fire in the sky. So it is fiery. It's beautiful. It's warm. Um, and this person in this card, when I look at it, I see this person being quite graceful and quite just, I feel like a, a, a piece here, actually. I feel like a real piece in this, this image. Um, and light coming to their heart. So bring in the unconditionally loving light of spirit. Let it burn through anything that's in your way, Leo and you shall soar. You shall soar. Okay, Cancer. Hello, beautiful Cancer. Thank you for your patience. I go in order of the houses, not the signs, which I know a lot of people, it throws them off, but this is how I do it. And my reasoning is I'm left-handed. <laughs> and that's a joke, but seriously, the hemispheres of my brain work a little differently. To me, it's logical to go in order of the houses. So Cancer, you're experiencing, you're experiencing this full, I just, I looked that way because I just felt this presence of a person and it wasn't, maybe it's the guides and the angels that I'm feeling. Cancer, you're experiencing this in your 12th house. This is the house of the mystic. This is where you're having your Gemini full moon, something coming to fruition, something coming into full culmination, the prize of your mystical self, perhaps. 12th house energy, retreat, rejuvenation, rejuvenation, beautiful Cancer, reprogramming your subconscious mind, letting go of an old story, releasing your past, letting go of past life memories, perhaps, something that is rejuvenating you. I feel that really strongly in this energy. Your guides. I think there's a reason I felt like there's literally, I have a landing right here in front of my window and I, and people go, are sometimes standing there for a moment to go to where they, to their apartments. And I really felt a real per person there, but it, it, I think it was an energetic presence. Ooh, I'm feeling that cancer. Okay. So this is where the full moon is for you. So I, this could be a quiet full moon for you. This could be a real awakening full moon, a real sense of receiving unconditional love from the divine. I don't know about you, Cancer. Leave me a comment, let me know. But I, as a Cancer rising Cancer moon, I really felt during the, the last couple of weeks of, um, well, let's say last week of Scorpio season, we're not out of it yet when I'm, when I'm recording this video, we're still in Scorpio season. But I'll just say the last few days, around the Mars Sun Kazim, you know, the Mars Kazimi, the Sun and Mars conjunct, around that time, I really felt an old chapter leaving and a past self leaving. I really felt a big shift and I hope you felt it too, Cancer. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you did, if you care to share. But, um, that was a real letting go and lightning. But because this, this moon is in your 12th house, you might need more sleep. You might, especially because we also have a lot of energy in Pisces during this full moon, you might need to rest more. So factor that in, especially if you're doing a lot of stuff. I know I'm, I've am i got a lot going on too, and I need to remember to have a lighter load around this time because we don't want to get overwhelmed. We want to enjoy it. Gemini energy can be so sparkly and light and fun and social. We want to let ourselves enjoy that. Where you are going to feel the fire of new inspiration, uh, where the sun and Mars are going to be, and Mercury as well, is in your sixth house, Cancer, of wellness, of everyday stuff. It's your body, mind, spirit health. This is also where you are doing your everyday daily errands and routines and, and um, just how you've set up your life, really, time-wise. Um, so you could feel something, a newness here. 
a newness in work. If you have your own business, you might doing, be doing your work differently. If you have a job job, you might be doing that differently. Um, a new assignment, a new boss, something could be shifting here, or just you get a new vision. This is very visionary energy, I feel, with the Sun and Mars together in Sagittarius. This is where we want to change, where we want, where we're, where even though it's a full moon, Sun and Mars together to me are either about cutting ties to something, letting something go, letting a job go, letting a health routine go, uh, changing your diet, changing your exercise uh, patterns, getting a new fresh start in an exercise. Maybe you're doing new strengthening, you're doing a, a new routine in terms of your physical health. Um, this is where you are, you really are inspired and motivated and where you're going to have discipline, I feel, Cancer, to start a new, something that's going to improve your health and wellness, holistically speaking, including your work day. Um, cancer, your message from spirit is don't overdo it. You are cardinal. You can get very, very directed and disciplined about something, but then you can overdo it. You can pile too much on your plate. You can say yes to too many people. You can be so diligent with your responsibilities and your commitments that you can feel, or you can just drink too much wine one night. That could happen too. Um, that you could feel that it could bring your energy down. So that's all. Just don't overdo it. Pace yourself, prioritize, and you'll be fine. Okay, so Cancer, let's see what this imaginative 12th house full moon has for you, beautiful Cancer. Your card is first quarter moon in Scorpio. Wah, wah. And I only say that because we had an intense Scorpio season. <laughs> Release your blocks. Cancer, do you feel like anything is blocking you? Maybe this doesn't apply to some of you. Maybe some of you are like, I am flying high. I am soaring. I have no blocks to release. But others of you may be saying, yeah, there's something in the way. Now, what's coming up for me here for you is that I think because this feels like an up-leveling full moon, this feels like where we are creating a solid, sustainable foundation for something new, Whenever we up level, there's always fear that comes up around maybe not being capable enough. Self-doubt. Okay, this is what it is. 12th house is self-doubt as well. So if you have any self-doubt, if you're being too perfectionistic, if you are wanting to have this grand manifestation outcome, it can only be one way. It has to be successful. Release that. Do your best to release that. Why? Because number one, it only holds you back. Number two, we are all and everything we're doing, all of our projects are works of art in progress and in process. And with all these mutable energies, we are really, we're going to be making changes. We're going to be tweaking. We're going to be fine tuning as we go. So try not to put a lot of pressure on yourself to get it right the first time. Instead, allow yourself to be in the flow and know that you're probably going to be altering whatever you're wanting to accomplish you're probably going to be making changes anyway it's like when you do a new website cancer and you're like you spend all this time stressing and then you end up changing it anyway <laughs> like just know it's a breathing it's breathable it's changeable and let yourself enjoy the process of whatever you're doing beautiful cancer let me know if this resonates i would love to hear my beautiful friend, this has been a general reading of the Gemini full moon. What a layered full moon is this with all the Sag energy, the Pisces energy, the Venus in Libra. Wow, there are so many different players involved in this full moon. Like I said, I think this is going to be foundational for us. I think this is going to be quite a turning point in terms of what we want to build going forward. So if you would like to know how are these energies playing out in my unique, your unique natal astrology chart. And how will the year ahead, 2024, look for you? Go to my website, check out my astrology consultations. We can do a natal chart reading, a life purpose reading, a heart's desire reading, or a 2025 year ahead reading. Very soon I'll be adding synastry compatibility relationship readings 
And you can now purchase a gift certificate on my website as well for whoever is near and dear to you for the holidays or for their birthday in 2024. So if that sparks your interest, go to my website, check out the testimonials from others who've worked with me, and I think you'll get a sense of whether you feel called to work with me. I'm so grateful for your presence. I'm so happy that you are part of this like-minded community. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, to give it a like, to comment below. Let me know what resonated for you or didn't resonate for you in this video. I so appreciate your subscribes to my channel. I so appreciate your donations. Without your support, I would not be here and it means the world to me. Thank you so much to my Sunday chat friends for being here with me. I absolutely love communing with you all and for whenever you're watching this video, I appreciate your presence. As promised, I have a free gift for you and that free gift is a soothing guided meditation reconnecting you to your spirit reconnecting you to your unconditionally loving guides. To get that free guided meditation, just go to my website, subscribe for free to my weekly astrology updates, and you'll get your instant download free gift. This Gemini full moon is important. It's turning point. It's the beginning to the next phase, the next chapter. It's opening us up to a beautiful, glorious 2024, and I'm so looking forward to it. So my beautiful friend, leave me a comment. Let me know how you're feeling about this lunation. And until my next video, I am sending you all my love.